Citing evidence from the text, what can you infer about the narrator and the setting from Poe's specific use of words? In this lesson, you will learn how to connect inferences about the narrator and setting by examining specific words and phrases. We've been reading the poem The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. Poe was known for his dark and mysterious literature and The Raven is no exception. The poem was published in 1845 and features a narrator who is grief-stricken over the death of his love Lenore. Late one night, a mysterious raven enters his bedroom and speaks one word to the narrator. The narrator is spooked by the raven and considers the raven an evil omen and a sign that Lenore is truly gone. Let's also review some of the things we know about good readers. We know good readers use evidence from the text to answer questions about the text. Let's also review an inference. An inference is a conclusion reached based on evidence and we know good readers use clues in the text to make inferences. Readers also use words and phrases from the text to make inferences about the characters as well as the setting. Today we are going to be exploring how to use evidence from the text to make inferences about the narrator and the setting of a poem. We will use these steps to help guide us. Reread the poem underlining key details about the narrator and the setting. Ask yourself, what do the underlined details tell you about the narrator? Ask yourself, what do the underlined details tell you about the setting? Ask yourself, what can you infer about the narrator and the setting? So let's begin. Remember, we are trying to answer the question, what can you infer about the narrator and the setting from Poe's specific use of words? For this video, we will focus on stanzas 1 through 2 of the poem. Let's begin by rereading the poem and underlining key details about the narrator and the setting. Remember, the narrator is the person whose viewpoint from which the story is being told, and the setting is the place and time of the story. We will focus on stanzas 1 through 2 to understand this skill. Let's begin by looking at key details about the narrator. Pondered, weak, and weary tells us about the narrator's condition. Over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore tells us what the narrator was doing. Nodded, nearly napping tells us the narrator was sleeping or trying to fall asleep. And Books or Seats of Sorrow, Sorrow for the Lost Lenore, tells us about the narrator's demeanor and condition. Let's look at key details about the setting. Midnight Dreary gives us details about the setting, including the time of day. Chamber Door gives the location. Bleak December gives us clues about the time. Now that we've underlined all of the words that describe the narrator and the setting, ask yourself, what do the underlined details tell you about the narrator? Well, we know from the words, pondered, weak, and weary, that the narrator was weak and weary at midnight. He was also thinking at this time, hence the word pondered. He is reading at midnight, while he is weak and weary, hence over a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. He was also nearly asleep, hence nodded, nearly napping. Lastly, we also see that he is grieving over someone named Lenore. Next, ask yourself, what do the underlying details tell you about the setting? Midnight Dreary tells me that it is midnight or late at night. Chamber Door is a bedroom so the narrator is inside of his bedroom. Bleak December tells us it is in the middle of winter. And Books tells us that there are books in his bedroom, possibly a library. Now I've done some good thinking about this part of the text. My last step is to jot or write down this thinking and write a response. Before we compose a written response, we want to make inferences using the details we have from the text about the narrator and the setting. Ask yourself, what can you infer about the narrator 
and the setting. First, we can infer that the narrator had been up for several hours or days, which could explain why he was weak and weary. Second, we can infer that the narrator is having trouble sleeping, as he is up at midnight. He could also be reading in order to help him sleep. Because the text suggests he was nearly napping, we can infer that his sleep is not long-lasting. We can also infer that the narrator may be alone in the house and there is no mention of anyone else and the fireplace in his chamber room is used for heat. Lastly, we can infer that the narrator is grieving over Lenore and this could possibly be the cause of his restlessness. Because of his grieving, Lenore is someone he cared deeply for. Now let's tie all of these steps and information together. I can answer my original question, citing evidence from the text, what can you infer about the narrator and the setting from Poe's specific use of words? The narrator is having a difficult time accepting the death of his love Lenore. Based on the clues about the time of day, midnight dreary, we can assume that the narrator is having trouble sleeping at night, and he possibly reads in order to help him fall asleep. In stanzas 1 through 2, it mentions the books he reads, over many a quaint volume of forgotten lore. The setting of the text is dark and mysterious. In the first stanza, the time is described as midnight, once upon a midnight dreary. The second stanza tells us the time of year, December. We can infer that the narrator's bedroom was dark, as he didn't know for sure what was on the other side of the door. In stanza 2, this darkness is described. Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there wondering, fearing. Because of the darkness, the reader could also infer that there is little light in the room. Based on all of this evidence, we can infer that the narrator is a very complex character who is grieving and disturbed, and the setting is a bleak and cold place. So let's review the steps we took to make inferences about the narrator and setting by examining word choice. Reread the poem, underlining key details about the narrator and the setting. Ask yourself, what do the underlying details tell you about the narrator? Ask yourself, what do the underlying details tell you about the setting? Ask yourself, what can you infer about the narrator and the setting? In this lesson, you have learned how to connect inferences about the narrator and setting by examining specific words and phrases.